Hey guys, this is Star Tolyong, and in this video, you will see three high-level leading concepts that pro uses to destroy other pros. Bzzm is probably the most exceptional mid laner coming into this season. Most of you that have experienced playing Puck against Ember Spirit will know that it is not fun getting constantly spammed by Slight of Fist. But in this clip, you will see how Bzzm completely outtrade an Ember Spirit with Puck. So he uses AWP to clear the range creep. Hits level 2, uses Waning Rift to clear the other range creep while keeping the melee creeps alive. By doing so, he created a scenario where he's holding this range creep hostage. Once the creep gets into the 9 range, the Ember will come up for the last hit and that is when he's going to do a lot of damage to him. As the Ember gets closer to the range creep, he draws the aggro off the range creep so it doesn't get into last hit range and uses it as hostage again to do damage to the Ember spirit. Once again, he cleared the range creeps before Ember Spirit, then made use of the fact that the creeps are low in health and the Ember Spirit has to go for these last hits to hit him. When Ember Spirit is focused on last hitting, he will not be hitting or spamming the puck and the puck wins the trade by clicking him out of lane. The concept of this laning has almost nothing to do with hero matchup and I'll prove it to you by swapping the heroes around. This is now the melee Ember Spirit against a ranged Storm Spirit. Creeps meet and he immediately turned on Flame Guard to kill off the range creep. Since Bzzm killed the range creep before Storm, he has a slight opening to do damage to Storm when the Storm is going for the range creep. One of the melee creep is about to get into last hit range, so he aggressively trades with the Storm. The Storm has to go for the last hit, so his aggression will not result in him taking a lot of damage. Now that the creep died, no dire creeps are in last hit range, so the Storm is free to hit the Ember Spirit. Bzzm understands exactly when the Storm is going to hit him, so he put these 3 low HP creeps up the high ground to avoid taking damage. Creeps are getting extremely low and it is very likely that the Storm goes for the last hit, so he glide down his high ground and challenge these last hits aggressively. Storm did go for the last hits, and he barely take any damage. The next wave of creeps arrive, there is no creeps in last hit range, the storm is free to poke the ember, so again, he put the creeps back up his high ground to avoid taking damage. So the concept here is, when your opponent is going for last hits, and you are not going for last hit, you are completely free to do damage to your opponents. If you are going for last hit, and your opponent is not going for last hit, they will be able to hit you and you have to read it and defensive aggro before that happens. When both players are going for last hits, it is likely that no one takes damage. The scenario that you want to create is to clear the creeps before your opponent, then use the window where your opponent is tied down to last hitting to do damage to them. Having a stack small camp will give you a massive advantage if you use it right. The safe lane of Team Liquid manages to set up a beautiful clean kill when Insania does this 53 second pull into unblocking the small camp into blocking the big camp. With a stack camp, Insania can pull and deny the entire wave anytime he wants, so Snapfire has to be standing around that area to prevent that from happening. Matoma Man then hard shove the lane under the DK's tower and create a massive distance between the Snapfire and the DK while the Snapfire is trying to prevent the pull. Matu then went on to challenge the DK's creeps under his tower, then put the creeps while running at the Snapfire. The distance between Snapfire and DK is far too huge, so Snapfire dies trying to stop the stack pull. Matumba Man then brings the two creeps that he dragged initially back to the lane and kill off the ranged creep and completely resets the wave. This is a very clean camp stack laning execution by Team Liquid. The main concept is to keep the lane shaft under enemy's tower when you have a stacked camp. No matter how strong your opponent's laning combo is, a shaft wave plus a stacked camp will always create this awkward 2v1 situation for the support and it's very hard for the offlaner to help the support. However, 
Having a stack camp is not always beneficial to the safe laner. In this clip, Tundra allowed Alliance to stack the small camp while they focused on pressuring the Rave King. They do have an observer ward seeing the lion go for the stack, and they completely ignored him. Tundra's duo is strong together, and more importantly, they are able to shove lanes better than the Rave King and Lion. When the wave is pushed in, there are two scenarios that can happen when you stack pool. Number one, the enemy challenges your stack and steal everything. So when they allow you to stack, you are actually stacking for them. Two, they can completely ignore the stack and dive your carry because you have no creeps and they can use the creeps to tank the tower and kill you under your tower. Tundra chose option number one and farmed their stack. The lion tries to steal some creeps, but he is now the one stuck in the awkward 2v1 situation. Therefore, lane shoving is the key to enabling a stack pool. If you have a stack and you manage to shove your wave, the stack pool will deny the entire wave and tilt the offlaner. The offlaner will cry to their support and their support will throw their body at the stack and die 2v1. If you have a bad lane shove duo, you might want to avoid a stack pool and do a single pool or a half pool instead. Enigma is chilling in the trees. Yuragi and Misha sneak behind him and attempts to take out the Enigma. This Enigma has 800 HP and this Luna and Bane are attempting to take him out from full HP. Eventually, OG is able to take out the Enigma, but how do a level 3 Luna and a level 4 Bane do 800 damage to the Enigma? This is where chase distance comes in. The Weaver is dead and the Enigma has to run a long distance to get to safety. The duo has a lot of space to chase and do 800 damage. This chase distance did not just randomly happen. In fact, a lot of these chase distances are created by players with a sequence of plays. In this clip, Zai is going to shove the lane under OG's tower while Boxy body blocks the small camp. The tower then pushes the creep into this position, not too far into Team Liquid's tower where the wave gets pushed back and pretty far from OG's tower where their carry doesn't feel safe farming. There is no small camp to pull and the only way to reset the wave is to either push the lane into Liquid's tower or draw the aggro back. Either way, they have to step forward and do something because if they don't, OG won't be able to farm and Liquid will hold the lane here and it is GG for OG safe lane. So OG walks forward, Zai and Boxy instantly ignore the wave and attempt to kill this 400 HP Shadow Demon. They are able to do it because of the chase distance they created. In another game, Zai and Boxy are going to do the exact same thing. Zai uses Midnight Pulse and pushes the lane under the tower. This causes the wave to get pulled back to Liquid's side of the map. Boxy watered the small camp and body blocked the big camp to ensure that not a single pull can happen during this lane. Zai then tanks the creep and makes sure that the radiant creeps do not get under tower so that the wave do not get pushed back. Right now, Zai and Boxy created a scenario that both the Bane and the Luna have to farm in the middle of the lane, which is not a very comfortable position if you are the carry. Boxy then seasoned the Luna with salt and pepper, gets him to about 4 to 500 health, then instant kill him because the chase distance is sufficient for them to do that amount of damage. Chase distance is scary. 2v1 scenarios is scary. But what is not scary is the like and subscribe button. Thank you for staying to the end of the video. Shout out to all my sugar daddies for sponsoring the channel. If you enjoy my daughter content, hit the like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification, and I'll see you in the next video.